Cool. So I, I want to start off actually uh, just 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 to say um, this this event, uh, well, the Open Knowledge Foundation and the Centre of Chevrolet have kind of led on the kind of organisational front. More than 30, uh, there are more than 30 partner organisations who contributed to making this happen. There's also been a, 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 a great steering committee who's given us a huge amount of input um, and been really helpful. In addition, uh, OSI have been a core sponsor to help this happen. We've had travel support, as many of you, or some of you at least, have had support in coming here from the ECE, OSI, Sunlight, um, and Wikimedia Deutschland. So we're really grateful to them. And we've also had meal sponsorship from Google and Microsoft. Um, and I wanted to say a particular thank you, people never know, but uh, may, 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 those of you who have organized events uh, know the amount of laboring going on behind the, behind the scenes. And uh, I want to say a particular thank you to um, Kasia, uh, Alec, you just heard from, and, and Igor from Sentinel to Freud, and Jonathan, uh, Kat, uh, Lucy, Daniel, Hauke, uh, from the OKF, and all our volunteers. I just wanted to do a quick round of applause for them, because they don't need to turn So onwards, um, we're going to try and keep to a very strict time schedule here, including myself. Um, so I just want to, to introduce the camp. First of all, well done on getting here. Um, I think it was something of, a, of an odyssey, but it's kind of, a, I don't know, I'm not sure whether Alice in Wonderland is the right metaphor, but you know, having arrived here, certainly I, my experience this morning after wandering around, even though I, I'd been here yesterday and the day before, finding this building, um, it was this incredible uh, uh, experience to come in here and walk up the stairs, uh, made all the better by, by the time period, you know. Uh, that's true that we won't be running, you know, the next to camp, you know, in, I don't know, Alice in Mongolia, just to make, to run on that theme, but um, I think this has been an incredible, incredible experience experience an incredible venue and thanks uh, really to Sense and Freud for putting, finding this venue and putting this together. Now, I just want to say a little bit about uh, growing the ecosystem. Uh, just to say, for those of you who don't know, the Open Knowledge Foundation is a not-for-profit which was community-based and founded in 2004 and we have projects and partnerships around the world but we're particularly active here in Europe. Um, what we do is we build tools and communities to create, use and share open knowledge. That's content and data that anybody is free to use, reuse, and redistribute. And what I want to talk about a little bit today is, is, is the open data ecosystem. Um, and, and what we need to do to sustain and build that. So, there's an increasing amount of open data. I don't know, I, I looked at my slide show, show from last year, and um, even you know, previous things on us before preparing this at 2 a.m. last night. And um, one of the things that struck me was the kind of emphasis on getting data. Um, I remember when we launched um, in 2006, when we started work on the Data Hub, uh, what was then called CCAN.net, there was basically no open data that we could find, really other than maybe some fe you know, federal government data and the human genome. Explicitly licensed open data was very rare, uh, particularly from governments, and even, for example, federal government data, it was unclear exactly what the situation was outside the United States. Um, I mean, for example, Library of Congress records that I was very interested in, uh, they were in theory free within the United States as data, but if I was outside the United States, maybe they sold them to you. And nowadays, today, if you go to the Data Hub, you'll see thousands of data sets, and I think that's a transformation. Similarly, three years ago, um, there was barely a single open uh, government data initiative, but today, uh, data catalogs are all, there's more than 170 data catalogs containing open data from governments around the world. Now, I think there's something to, to be said at this moment. Sometimes you look at those for how much data is there, how perfectly licensed it is. Um, and, you know, for example, two or three weeks ago in New York, the Open Government Partnership launched with a whole bunch of governments saying, yeah, you know, we're fantastically on board uh, with opening up data, but there's a kind of question of commitment or statement versus sometimes delivery that, that we still need to close in a significant, significant way. Uh, you know, I remember one comment, comment from a delegate, not to single out a country, but they were saying, you know, the Philippines here was signing up and that was fantastic, but they were kind of third bottom on the world list of kind of protection of journalists, you know, um, you know, they, you know in terms of journalists getting killed or uh, intimidated for, for reporting on matters. Um, and, you know, that, 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 that those two things are going to obviously got to have some relation. So there's been a huge amount of progress. There's a, there's a long way still to go, but I think we're kind of, if you like, somewhat cracking at least the open government data nut um, relative to where we were, uh, let's say, four years ago. Um, but data alone is not enough. Um, we need open tools and community 
uh, to use that data. You know, if, uh, open data isn't a magic potion, and it isn't an end in itself. It's a means to an end. Um, we get open data because we want to understand the world better. We want to find a better way to work. We want to um, keep, hold our governments to account better or understand what they're doing better. We, we always need to use data in some way for some other end. And to do that, tools and communities are essential. People uh, are essential. Open data has no value if it isn't used. Um, if we had you know, thousands of data sets and no one was doing anything interesting with them or useful, we would fundamentally fail. And I'm sure that's, that's very obvious to all of us, but it's something that means that we need to think about what needs to happen for that, for that to occur. And partly it is happening, but what more do we need to do? And I think um, I, a point I would emphasize here, um, and it, it's, a, it's a point that can be debated, is I think at least a, a substantial portion of the core tools that we're using here need to be open. Um, sometimes I talk with people like, well, you know, you've got all this open data, you know, the, the fact is, you know, if you, if you can only then exploit these large data sets on a, you know, a few providers' infrastructure, that's not a problem with those providers, you know, what matters is having the open data, um, you know, you can always, you know, you then at least have access to information, you could always in theory leave, but I think if we don't actually have the capacity, maybe not individually, but at least within fairly small and distributed groups, to analyze, to understand, to dig into that data, we have a serious problem. And I think to, to do that, we need that core, those core tools and that core infrastructure to be open, to be freely and openly available so the widest set of people can have access to it. Because one of the great benefits of, or at least you know, one of the great benefits of open data is this, this kind of idea, the many minds principle, the idea that the best thing to do with this data will be thought of as someone else. And if we have to go through a fairly small number of people or small tool sets that we don't actually have access or control over to do that digging into data, that analysis or that building of applications and services, we're going to be we're going to have a serious problem. So, I think another point to emphasise here is really the tools and communities uh, that we have are still very limited. Um, really, compared, you know, really there are in their rudimentary aspects. Um, um, but there are promising signs. So, I mean, there's some seeing some interesting tools, open tools developed, some of these people are here. I mean, there's a great tool called Scraper Wiki, um, which does an amazing job of putting the ability to kind of do uh, transformational data, dig out data from all across the web in the, in the hands of anyone with access to a web connection and uh, some, some, some coding skills. I mean, I think we're hoping to move, I think they're hoping to move those coding skills skills towards zero, but it, it's a non-trivial problem. Um, like Google Refine and uh, Recline, built by Max Opton, a great, uh, another great tool that is kind of beginning to democratize the ability to do stuff with data. And tools like CCAN and the Data Hub, open source uh, infrastructure for hosting, managing, and sharing data with other people. And there's also some really interesting communities, and we're fortunate to have here Ellie Miller from the Sunlight Foundation. She's done an amazing uh, job of building up not, not just tools and services and apps, but also, uh, I think, a community around those. Um, uh, you know, one of the things I, I actually, you know, the, the, the Sunlight Labs is one of the most um, amazing things, I think, and that the community has got built up around those um, apps. Um, the Transparency Hackers, um, who I was fortunate enough uh, to spend some really inspiring time with in Brazil. I kind of, I remember rocking up there in May and kind of, I don't know, I, I met more people doing civic hacking, in fact, in, 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 you know, there were more people there who kind of travelled like six hours from Sao Paulo than I actually met in the UK, um, even though it has a very vibrant civic hacking community and were really amazing, and again, a couple of them are here. Um, and I hope, like ourselves, you know, one of the things we're hoping to do is put together a community um, to, to do things with this data and to help, help grow and expand this kind of movement. And that, in some ways, is, is, is why we're here today. Um, in, in putting together this camp with all of these partners with, with, with you guys, I mean, it's really you who make these kind of events in a way, it's the participants. Um, the speakers are just here as some kind of lure to get you to the venue, and it's really you talking to each other that's the most valuable thing of, of coming here. And this camp brings together an international and very diverse set of people. And we hope that in doing that, um, it provides an opportunity to build connections, to spark ideas that will enable us. Um, to develop and extend those tools and communities, those tools and communities that are still very limited, and in doing that, to sustain and expand the open data and open government ecosystem that we see in its infancy today. We see it at its beginning, um, and that, that, that we hope will go on to live a vibrant and, 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 and uh, powerful future. So, that's it from me, and I hope you enjoy the camp. Thank you very much.